Have you ever installed a new speaker into a door location only to be disappointed in the output in the mid bass that's coming from that new speaker? Well, I have a solution for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can build a new custom adapter that will not only fit any size speaker and be weatherproof, but it will also sound great by increasing your mid bass and do a better job at directing the sound into your vehicle. Although the speaker itself isn't very high quality, there is a lot of engineering that went into the design of this bracket in the factory stock location. When we install our new speakers, we want to be sure to include some of the good design elements. First off, we note that the bracket itself is made out of composite plastic. This helps the bracket to stay weatherproof as water can get inside of the door panel. We also note that the bracket spaces the speaker away from the door itself. This allows for clearance behind the speaker for the window mechanism. Finally, we note that there is foam around the outside of the speaker that helps couple the speaker bracket to the door panel. So we know that we want to include these important design elements when we're fabricating our new bracket. This will give us an install that is not only reliable, but sounds much better. After removing the factory speaker adapter, I found that there's also foam tape around the back side. This helps to create an acoustic seal and also isolates the adapter from the door skin. Another important element that we'll want to include for our new adapters for our new component speakers. Since we want to make our new adapters completely out of composite plastics, I've selected this ABS plastic for the base plate. I set my factory adapter on the new ABS sheet and outline it with a silver marker. The silver makes the line much easier to see when rough cutting. For rough cutting, I'll be using a special bimetal blade that works great for cutting plastic. I have also engaged the orbital setting on my jigsaw. This makes the saw cut on one pass rather than both up and down. I have found that this works the best for plastic. After rough cutting my new ABS plastic within a quarter of an inch, I had to remove the factory gasket from the factory speaker adapter. This allowed me to then apply template tape which is double sided sticky tape. With this template tape applied, I could then stick the old piece to the new piece. If you have any issues with the template tape sticking to the plastic, you could always wipe it clean and apply an adhesion promoter. In order to trim the new piece perfectly to the same shape as the old piece, we'll be using a flush trim bit on the router. Once I have set my bearing height to ride along the profile of the factory speaker adapter, we can begin cutting. When cutting plastic, it is extremely important that you follow good router etiquette. You need to be sure that you are feeding the material against the rotation of the router bit. One slip in the wrong direction and the piece will grab really hard. This is dangerous and you should have adequate training before attempting it. Also, it never hurts to have things nice and lubed up. That's what she said. <laughs> After completing the pass, you can see that our new shape is exactly the same shape as our factory adapter. While the two pieces are still stuck together, we'll drill out the mounting holes. Be sure to have a piece of wood behind the plastic when you drill through so that it doesn't crack. Also be sure to maintain constant even pressure. With the backing plate complete, we need to make a circular cutout that we can use to mount the speaker. Here I have a speaker ring that fits my speaker perfectly. I made it using a technique for creating perfect circles that is uploaded on my channel. Link in the video description. Since our template circle is made out of wood, we need to transfer it to this high density polyethylene, also known as HDPE. Much like the backer plate, I start with drawing an outline on the material and then rough cutting it with the jigsaw. I then stick my template to it which will allow me to make a copy of it on the router. It is important to cut away any extra template tape so that it doesn't get wrapped around the router bit. After setting my router bit to the correct height, I then apply template tape to the top of my template. This allows me to apply my router shield to the top of the assembly. This shield allows me to work with small pieces and still maintain a high level of safety. I can easily see through the shield to the work piece. Especially with plastic, if there is an issue, then I don't have to worry about my fingers being in harm's way. This is one of those tools that if you do a lot of router work, I would strongly suggest you purchase. It's simply much more cost effective than a trip to the emergency room. Now that our speaker mounting ring is complete and we've checked its fit with the speaker, we can move on to combining it with the backer plate. In order to add a hole of the same inner diameter on the backer plate, I started with rough cutting out the center hole. I then applied my speaker template to that hole. Finally, I once again used my router shield and cut out that center hole with my flush trim bit. 
To assemble the composite pieces with one another, I started with applying a bead of Mobile Solution CA glue. I then carefully aligned the components and stuck them together and used the CA glue activator to ensure a bond. After a few minutes of drying, I then applied an additional fillet around the outside of the ring just to ensure that these two pieces were stuck together. After about 15 minutes of drying time, I then pre-drilled holes for the mounting hardware for the speakers. This helps to ensure that the plastic won't split when you apply the fastener. I definitely recommend mounting the mounting hardware by hand so that you don't accidentally strip out the hole. Also, be sure to use a steady hand so that you don't slip and punch a hole in the surround of the speaker. So far, we've completed two out of the three of our design goals. We made these adapters out of composites so that they're weatherproof. We also spaced the speaker effectively to allow room for the window hardware. But what about that foam ring? We want these speakers to sound as amazing as possible. In order to do so, we want to make sure that we direct the sound through the hole in the door panel. This is where the new fast rings from Sound Connection Incorporated come into play. These acoustically sealing transducer rings come in different sizes for all the different speakers that are available. Each kit includes three rings that already have adhesive applied as shown here. These rings help to direct the sound where we want it and isolate it where we don't want it. I started with removing the adhesive backing and applying the outer ring around the speaker. The adhesive on these rings is very sticky and effective. This is great because we want to be absolutely sure that this piece isn't going to fall off inside of the door panel. Next, we will flip over the assembly and apply the medium sized ring to the back of our new adapter. This rear ring can help to shield the speaker from the elements. Once complete, your speaker adapter should look like this. I found that on my assembly I had to modify the rear ring. Do be aware that every door panel assembly is different, so you might have to do the same thing. Luckily though, this foam cuts easily with a sharp blade. Installation of our new speaker adapters was very simple. I started with putting in the plug into the inside of the door panel to act as a rear wave dampener. I then made my speaker connections just like you would normally. I'm very excited about my new custom made speaker adapter. We've taken the good qualities of the factory design and combined them with an adapter that allows us to fit any size speaker. Prior to making this video, these same speakers were installed in this location using wooden brackets and they did not have the foam rings. After installing this new adapter assembly, I immediately noticed that there was a lot more mid bass. I also noticed that a lot of the different instruments seemed to be much more defined. The guitar, for instance, you could really hear the strum of each string. This really goes to show how a quality installation can really pay off sound-wise. All items in this video are listed in the video description. Thanks to the CAF Patreon group, I was able to afford the plastic and different materials used in this video. If you would like to join the group, please click the link in the lower left-hand corner on screen. Thanks again to Nathan Coleman, Jerry Gibson, George Lopez, Jason Marble, and Cliff Bryans, and all the other Patreon supporters.